Randomness. RNG. It's difficult to improve your gameplay if it feels like the ground is constantly shifting under your feet. RNG is baked into pretty much every modern game, so it can be hard to tell whether you're losing because you're bad or maybe just unlucky. Well, today you're in luck because I have three tips that can teach you how to account for RNG in your gaming session. Hello everyone, I hope you're doing fine. My name is Skyline and tip number one is to make sure you have a big enough sample size. Sessions, not games. You play one game, you could get lucky, you could get unlucky. You play 10, it's much less likely. And just playing games randomly is not enough. Remember, we're trying to beat randomness, meaning we need to isolate the variables. To be a true uh, session, you need to have congruency, consistency. You need to have a plan. If you're playing Fortnite, drop the same place every time. If you're playing Teamfight Tactics, Try to pick the same one or two strategies every time. Overwatch, pick the same hero every time. If you eliminate all these factors and play 10 games in a row, sure, there's a chance that you could get unlucky 10 games in a row or lucky 10 games in a row, but it's super, super unlikely. Chances are 99% of the time, you're going to eliminate the random factors and you'll have a wider view. But even that is still not enough. Just playing the games by itself might be good, but you need to have that wider perspective. Now, if you have a really good memory, if you have a, a systematic way of thinking, it's possible that you could just play 10 games, remember everything that you did and think back and, and have a perfect view, but chances are you don't. This is where recording your gameplay, taking notes especially, uh, is, is amazing whether it's in your head or particularly on a piece of paper or something, taking notes after every game of what happened so that at the end of the session, it's not just based off of memory because you, you're gonna tend to only remember the bad luck or the good luck. You know, you need to go back, look at your notes, and then you can see what happened across all 10 games, you'll probably find a pattern. For this reason, don't even try to analyze one game. Don't even try, just note it down, remember it in your head, keep playing until the end of the session, then look back. You had one game as soldier where you thought you did a billion damage but you still lost, don't worry about it, just go to the end, look back on your session, and it'll give you way more context as to what actually happened in that game. Maybe it was randomness, maybe it was trash damage that you were doing and you weren't actually being helpful, who knows? Even go back and look at the VOD, that'll definitely help after you've established a pattern, you can go into the VOD and you know what you're looking for. So please, 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 before we even move on to the next two tips, this is a prerequisite. You need to be thinking in terms of sessions, not games. Tip number two, do the math. Do the math, dude. I, I, I can't believe how many times people just don't do the math. They think that they get unlucky when in reality, if you calculate it out, it's actually not that bad. Example, Teamfight Tactics is really the biggest RNG trap I've seen released in a long time. It has a lot of math, a lot of different probabilities working together, so a lot of times it can seem like something happened that was lucky or unlucky, when in reality, it, uh, it was just average, especially when you play over a bunch of different games. Uh, an example is, let's say, I couldn't complete my Sejuani. I rolled 20 times, you know, I had 50 gold. I was like, okay, I'm gonna roll out so I can find my Sejuani, so I can rank up my tier four units. I'm just gonna spend it all. I'm gonna spend it all so I can win, okay? So I spent 60 gold, 30 rolls, and I somehow didn't complete it. What's up with that? So let's do it, let's do the math. I'm gonna prove a point here, okay? I busted out Google Sheets. It's like Excel, except way worse, but also way better. Uh, anyway, the important part of, if you don't need team fight tactics, every time you roll, you get five heroes to choose from. And let's say our crazy Sejuani roller is rolling, I don't know, 30 times, that's 60 gold, which is a lot of gold, right? So 30 times, uh, well, 30 times five, that's uh, that's gonna be 150. Yeah, 100, so he has 150 chances, okay? He has a 15% chance to roll a level five. And once he's rolling, rolled a level five, he has an 11% chance to roll a Sejuani. So we multiply those together, right? Uh, 0.15 times 0.11, there you go. And that's a 1% chance, cool. Now the math gets a little bit more complicated, but there's websites devoted to this binomial distribution. It's pretty cool. So what's the probability of success on a single trial? Boom, 1%, 0.0165, 0.0165. Number of trials, we got 150 trials. All right, number of successes, we want at least two. All right, that'll turn our level one Sejuani into a, our one star Sejuani into a three star Sejuani. Let's go, boom. That is a 71% chance. 
Now, a 71% chance doesn't seem too bad, but if you're gonna roll 30 times, spend 60 gold, you, you figure, I might as well, I'm pretty much guaranteed, but in reality, 70% is like just barely cutting it close. Like that is very narrow. You can definitely lose those a bunch of times. And again, that's if you roll it 30 times. If we only roll it 20 times, we only have 100 instead of 150, which gives us only less than a 50% chance. Less than a 50% chance if you spend all your gold at 40 to try to hit that three star Sejuani. Now, um, the question is, what is a percent chance that you're looking for here? Let's say you've done the math. You're like, okay, well, that's about 50-50. I should expect that on average. People do that with Magic the Gathering and any mana-based game a lot. They're like, oh, well, it's like, uh, I mean, on average, on average, I should hit it, right? On average, 50-50 chance, I should hit it, right? That's, that's not enough, guys. You can't be going on 50. Remember I said 70% before was just barely, barely, barely cutting it close? I meant that. Whenever you're looking at RNG in games, you should never accept anything below 70% is like really, really cutting it, but my goal is 75%. You want your thing to work, you want the game, you want the random factors to work in your favor at least 75% of the time. I'll explain why. So mo most of you probably want to climb some sort of leaderboard, right? You want to get diamond, you want to get Grandmaster, you want to get, you want to climb, right? That means you need a higher than 50% win ratio. In reality, if you don't want to be here for a million years, you'll need more like a 60, 55 at the lowest, uh, hopefully a 60% win ratio at the uh, is pretty good. And that means you can't be taking 50-50s. You can't even be taking 55s or 60-40s, right? Because you need to account for the fact that you have human error. So uh, if you go, if you go with my goal of 75%, 75% uh, RNG on your side, and then you account for the fact that you're not perfect, you're gonna mess up sometimes, even if the RNG is on your side, you're not always gonna win because you're just gonna screw up, right? So 75% account for human error, that puts you down to like the 60% range probably, 55% uh, on the very low side, but six, you know, hopefully that's 60, 65% like really, really rocking range where you're really screaming up the leaderboard and that's the goal. So honestly, having done this math and I didn't do the math beforehand, I literally, didn't even do the math beforehand, I hail married it. I'm like, well, if it doesn't work, I'll just cut it and come up with a different example. But the Sejuani example, that's really good to know. Now I know that if I want a four star, let's say it's a Draven, let's say if I'm playing Teamfight Tactics and I'm sitting on like a ton of gold and I figure, hey, I might as well finish up my four star. Might as well just cash it all in because we're near the end of the game or whatever. 70% chance, at that chance, you know, I might do it if I'm desperate, but that's like, there are probably better options at that point because it's only 70, it's only 70% chance. I'm gonna look for better options that are a little bit higher RNG on my side. So if I have multiple rank threes, sure, that really increases it. It probably brings it up to like an 85 to 90% chance. I'll take that any day, right? If I, uh, I mean, otherwise I'll just level up and put another unit out. That's because that's a 100% guaranteed chance that that's gonna work out, right? That's, there's no randomness in that. So again, remember, you have your session, you have your multiple games that you've played, go back, and if you find something out of place, you're like, man, that keeps happening, or uh, man, you know, I always get mana screwed. Do the math, and if it's below 70%, and I mean, if you're if you're playing Magic: The Gathering, it should be up at 75. It should be up at 75, 80% to hit your land drops, guys. Uh, if it's below that, you need to reevaluate. 50%, 60%, not good enough. You're not going to climb, especially if you account for the fact that again, you have human error. You'll probably actually be at a negative. You'll be you'll be negative. So you don't want that. And I'm about to go on to tip number three. But a bonus to this is remember, not all games even have RNG. Starcraft has no random fact. Well, basically has no random factors. Fighting games mostly have no random factors. That doesn't mean that there isn't randomness though have you ever been watching a fighting game tournament and so, and there was like this weird scenario and one guy accidentally pixel came over here and then did a cross up that neither player expected and it wound up hitting the guy and getting a combo that's pretty random in starcraft you have lots of stuff happening in the fog where sometimes players just need to guess at what the other person is doing that's sort of random right even if it's not rng so in those cases doing the math is basically going back looking at the replay looking at the vod looking at your notes and saying okay well um you know that's crazy because that guy countered exactly my strategy right i was i was gonna do a uh, an overlord drop and he just happened to have the exact counter even though he didn't scout it at all he didn't throw th 
you didn't bring any scouts out. That's random. Um, you know, go go in from that player's perspective and think about what his options were. And chances are, uh, he'll have a few different options. Maybe this one's the best option. And then the one he picked was like maybe the second or third best option. That leaves around maybe a 20, 25, 30% chance of, of them doing it. Again, that puts it in that 70% range, perhaps maybe 65, 70% range, right? Put a percentage on people's actions. And that might show you that actually this strategy I did was riskier than I thought. You know, even though he didn't scout it, the chances of him accidentally countering it, countering it were like maybe... 40 to 35 percent, which is not that bad actually for him. All right, now the third and final tip to dealing with RNG is to not forget that when you're reviewing things always, and again, prerequisites guys, I'm doing this in order for a reason, never forget the numbers, never forget the math, never forget over a long, you know, that play session. Going in and reviewing a VOD with no context can be catastrophic. Take poker, for example. There are plenty of times where a player folds even though they had the winning hand. Now, was that fold wrong? If you go back and you look at it, you might think, oh, well, you know, I guess I shouldn't have folded there. Well, no, you, you should have still folded there if the numbers weren't in your favor. So definitely keep that. It's so, so important. It can be very difficult to, to find because generally when you see something work out, you're like, oh, well, yeah that worked out because it was good. And if you see something not work out, you know, our monkey brains, humans are not very good at abstract numbers and thinking, right? When it comes to intuition, we'll, we'll just assume, oh, uh, Pavlovian conditioning. If I did that and it was bad and I lost, then I should uh, not do that again, right? And this particularly in team games can be a problem because people very quickly learn or learn to not trust people, negative emotions get stuck in your brain much more easily than neutral to neutral positive ones, you know? So that time when you were Anna and you ulted the Genji before he used Dragon Blade and he just like was like, oh, I'm confused. I, uh, what do I do with this? And he, he just like didn't use Dragon Blade or he used it after Nano Boost wore off or something. You'll keep that in your mind if you if you aren't keeping the play session, if you're not remembering the, these things, you'll keep that in your mind and you'll not ult the Genji next time. You'll be like, oh, can't trust those Genjis, I need to wait until they ult. When, when in reality, 80% of Genjis, if they get nano boosted, will ult and dash in and kill everyone and win the game for you. All right, maybe not 80%, but like, it's a, it, they'll at least ult and try, right? You can bank on that at least 80% of the time. So uh, it wasn't a mistake to nano him beforehand, right? And you see that a lot, like I said, with team games, where you'll go out of your way to do something for a teammate, expecting them to do something that any normal person would do, they don't do it, and so you're like, nope, never doing it again, never doing it again. Um, yeah, uh, like I said, especially for key, for team games, uh, don't do that. It also works the other way. StarCraft is a, good, is a good example where you scout something once, it's not there. Scout something twice, it's not there. Scout something three times, it's not there. You're like, oh, well, I guess I'm not going to scout it any, anymore. And then, of course, the guy does it on the fourth game. Well, guess what? If you just uh, do the, do you know, if you look at the play session, well, it happened about 25% of the time. Eh, it's maybe about on the edge, right? I, I should probably scout it. A 25% chance, I should probably scout that. Even though it only happened one time out of three, you'll probably be like, oh, man, I got really unlucky. Um, if, if you just look at it in a vacuum. Just because something didn't work out doesn't mean it wasn't the correct choice. So really, it just comes down to this. Make sure everything you do in a game, after you uh, analyze it afterwards, sometimes you can do actual math, like with Teamfight Tactics. Sometimes you can do sort of mental math, like I said in StarCraft, go in the replay, look at from the other person's perspective, sort of think of his options. And sometimes you just need to brute force it. You just need to play 30 games and then literally, oh, that happened six games out of 30. That happened uh, 20 games out of 30, right? Literally just do it by experimentation. Uh, through long play sessions and, and taking notes, you know, taking notes is so important when you're keeping track of these things. You need to know exactly what to keep track of as well. And just make sure that everything you're doing has that 75% RNG or random other behavioral factor constant. And you will never get screwed by RNG again. I guarantee you that. At least not over a play session, right? Maybe one game, maybe two games, maybe even 10 games if you play a game enough, but yeah. You will, uh, it, it'll change your life. It'll change your life. I'm cha I'm changing lives here by doing the math on how many times it takes to roll Sejuani.
That might, that might be the most self-indulgent thing I ever said. I'm changing lives by doing, by doing team fight, by doing math about video games. Subscribe to me on YouTube, follow me on Twitter, join my Discord, follow me on Twitch, hit the bell, f follow me on uh, Ask FM, where um, I'll be going back to high school, I guess. I'm more like middle school, actually. Never forget to stay positive, and have a great day. See you next time. I'm cha I'm changing lives here.